some directors have a knack for keeping viewers on the edge of their seats. And our next director is no exception. Being the director, I've always considered myself a part of the audience. You could leave the breadcrumbs that would indicate that you were going to go the way all the other films had gone. And then all of a sudden you make a quick left turn, and they're not prepared for that. How you like that? We will be breaking down the directing style of Quentin Tarantino. It's impossible to define a director's cinematic style by just looking at a single aspect of their work. So we're going to show you how Tarantino approaches his decisions across seven areas of focus, so that you can see how every little decision makes up the entire picture. Au revoir, Shushana! Remember to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to stay in the loop for new videos. Our first directing element, story. Get down, get down. Tarantino creates highly effective dialogue that has a unique style. And you know what they call uh, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? They don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese? Oh man, they got the metric system. They wouldn't know what the fuck a quarter pounder is. And what do they call it? They call it uh, Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. That's right. And leaves loose ends. You're gonna be taking Mia Wallace out on a date. It is not a date. He moves away from an interesting conversation to an even more interesting situation. How you boys doing? He builds situations that suddenly flip. Right when we think we understand the scene, he pulls the rock out. Mommy, I'm home. Hey, baby. How was school? This is classic Tarantino. They will feed us into your Nazi boss. If you want to build a story like Tarantino, write natural dialogue that builds unique voices. You know what this is? It's the world's smallest violin playing just for the waitresses. Write scenes that lead the audience in one direction and then reveal the entire picture. Hey! Don't lay your palms flat on that tabletop! If you lift those palms off that turtle shell tabletop, Mr. Pooch is gonna let loose with both barrels that sawed off. To learn more, make sure to check the description below for a link to helpful tips that will make your dialogue stand out. Our second subject, production design. Great production design is one of the best ways to steer tone, mood, and provide story details through visual choices. Tarantino commonly does two things with his production design. He likes to build contrast, and he likes to exaggerate. <laughs> It can be a prop, facial hair, a costume. Tarantino likes to give his characters a trademark outfit, a uniform. It establishes a visual identity. Take, for example, the gang in Reservoir Dogs. Everyone is wearing the same black suit, except for two people. Joe Cabot and his son, Nice Guy Eddie. All right, everybody cough up some green for the lady. The suits create a narrative boundary. You lost your fucking mind. With the enlisted men on one side and the officers on the other. What about a less subtle example? You may choose your character's costume. Like with this scene from Django Unchained. He stands out and this helps to build contrast from his former self. But also from the plantation owners. He is loud and proud, 
Django Unchained. You remember me? I like the way you die, boy. Tarantino also does this with props. Take this scene from Inglorious Bastards, where both men have pipes. But one is exaggerated. The difference in imagery gives you insight into how these men each lead very different lives, but also the power imbalance. Lastly, it provides a bit of liberty in a scene that is anything but. So remember, if you want to use production design like Tarantino, find opportunities for visual contrast and don't forget to exaggerate your points with bold design choice. Make sure to check the description below for a free production design worksheet. Our third subject, color. For Tarantino, color is an emotional trigger. <laughs> While he will experiment with black and white footage from time to time, he generally wants his colors to pop. When characters are on a mission, often out for revenge, this will be draped in bold primary colors, like the royal blue Django, or canary yellow with Kiddo, or scarlet red with Shoshana. But he also uses color to set a mood. Take a look at the opening scene from Jackie Brown. The first color we see are shades of blue. Blue can keep us cool. It can bring us down, mellow us out. But when Jackie enters the frame, we get a shock of more blue. The security x-ray machine awash with blue. The color choice is bold, and it tells us that Jackie is a bold character. The color sets the tone for the entire film and lets us know who we're dealing with. A bold woman, tired of the old hustle and ready for a new one. So remember, if you want to approach color like Tarantino, use bold primary colors that build mood, tone, passion, and energy. Make sure to check the description below for a free ebook where we provide countless examples and explain the science of color for you to use in your own projects. Our next subject Cinematography. Great cinematography is a combination of many different techniques like lighting, camera movement, lens choice, and framing. But this one is a fucking madman. Let's look at the opening scene from Inglorious Bastards. Well, I'm very familiar with you and your family. I have no way of knowing if you are familiar with who I am. In this moment, he frames hands with an OTS medium shot. Are you aware of my existence? Yes. La Petite is in a single medium shot. La Petite is isolated. Then we cut back to matching OTSs. The mood has shifted. We can relax. Now we're just doing paperwork. Uh, would it disturb you if I smoked my pipe? Oh, please, Monsieur Lapetit, this is your house. Make yourself comfortable. Tarantino is toying with our emotions. What have you heard about the travels? When Lapadit mentions rumors... Only rumors. I love rumors. Lapadit is lying. So we move back out of the OTS into a single medium shot. We heard the Dreyfuses had made their way into Spain. When La Petite mentions the children, and the children, Tarantino dollies across the lines. He breaks the 180 degree rule. Then everything flips. Hiding underneath the floorboards is the Dreyfus family. As tension grows, we switch to medium close-ups, each of which dolly forward, building suspense. I might add also that any information that makes a performance of my duty easier will not be met with punishment. And eventually eases into a close-up. You're sheltering enemies of the state, are you not? Yes. Game over. And you it! 
So remember, if you want to approach cinematography like Tarantino, Find opportunities to elicit strong emotions from the viewer with camera placement and movement. This will help tie the viewer's emotions to both the characters and the plot. Let's move on. Editing. Tarantino builds something through his edits. Often, it's anticipation. In other cases, fear. Bewegt dein Arsch ins Auto. Take this scene from Inglorious Bastards. Shoshana is at a very uncomfortable dinner. She'd like to leave. Also gut, Fräulein. Sie werden ihr Kino heute Abend für eine Privatverführung schließen. Jeune demoiselle, vous allez fermer votre cinéma ce soir et organiser une projection privée pour moi. Tarantino knows we want the dinner to end as well. Quel film allemand avez-vous? So right when Lando arrives, he cuts to Shoshana's face. Ah, Landa, da sind sie ja. Emmanuel, voici le colonel SS Landa. Il sera chargé de la sécurité pour la première. The entire scene focuses on Shoshana. Als Chef dieses freudigen deutschen Ereignisses muss ich ein paar Worte mit Mademoiselle Minieu wechseln. Was für Worte? Even while Landa and Zola argue, he never cuts away from her. He elected to use an uninterrupted take in the edit, because he knows it'll connect the viewer even more to Shoshana. Because we fear for her. Aber in all deinen Ruf voraus. Müssen Mademoiselle Mimieux oder ich uns Sorgen machen? Hans, der Junge war jetzt nicht böse. Er hat sich verkauft in die Kleine. Und er hat recht. Ihr Ruf eilt ihn voraus. But what about the anticipation? Part of achieving this effect is by stretching moments out. Take this scene from Pulp Fiction. Mia is dying. She's ODing? She's fucking dying on me, man! We know how important this moment is. Mia will die, and Vincent will become a grease spot. Do you know who Marcel Wallace is? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Well, if she croaks on me, I'm a fucking grease spot! Vincent needs to give her a shot to the heart. Right. Come on, man, hurry up! Fuck. Okay, okay. So Tarantino stretches it out in the edit. All right, count to three. All right, ready? One. Two. So, if you're editing like Tarantino, find opportunities to build fear in the viewer, even if it means lingering on a reaction shot longer. Find ways to build anticipation. Where were we? Edit for emotion and be bold. Want to learn how to make the perfect edit for your story? Make sure to check the description below for a link to Walter Murch's Rule of Six, where Murch breaks down the workflow for making a cut that helps to tell your story. Moving on. Sound design. Tarantino's sound choices are often a mixture between highly authentic and cheeky. His sound design is there for emphasis. Bring it up. Take this scene from Kill Bill. You want some coffee? Yeah, sure. The sound design in this scene creates an over-the-top, almost cartoon-like effect. Listen to each sound carefully. Very funny, bitch. <laughs> Very funny! <laughs> The gunshot echoes out, carrying the initial drama through each cut. Very funny! When Kiddo kicks the mug, we hear a sound almost like a baseball bat connecting with a golf ball. 
Then, as the knife is drawn, we hear the emphasized sound of metal, as if she were a medieval knight, capped off by the sound of the knife cutting through the air. Along with a screech from Venita's head, sliding down the cabinet glass. There is a sort of levity behind the violence. This is what you get for fucking around with Yakuza's! Go home to your mother! If there was ever a way to summarize Tarantino... Hey, what's going on? You hear that? <laughs> violence meets levity. Now throw out your other pistol. I ain't got another pistol. Well, you better shoot another pistol at your ass. Because if you don't throw one up here in the next two seconds, we're going to kill this bitch. See? Told you. If you want to approach sound design like Tarantino, <laughs> don't be afraid to emphasize the visuals with extreme, even outlandish, sound effects. Next, our final category, music. The music tracks in Tarantino's films are memorable. His energy is tied to music that he personally loves. Memories from his favorite films and his childhood. He loves spaghetti westerns. His choice in music often feels wrong, inappropriate. And thus he is able to defy expectations. Tarantino was so concerned with music in his first film, Reservoir Dogs, he spent the entire music budget on a single song. This song. This scene shows how Tarantino uses music to do two things, cut against tones and expectations, and to make scenes flat out entertaining. This is a fun song. It's catchy, very different from the visuals on screen. Tarantino chooses music that he enjoys, and for the vast majority of his films, he avoids an original score. When Tarantino finally did use a score, he worked with the original spaghetti western composer Ennio Morricone. The other remarkable thing about Tarantino's music is how he avoids it. Especially during moments of rising suspense. Il y avait une autre chose que je voulais vous demander. Mais maintenant, sur ma vie, impossible de m'en souvenir. Enfin, bon, ce ne devait pas être important. If you want to use music like Tarantino, don't feel like you need to find a composer or build an original score. <sighs> find music that you personally love and use it during moments that flips the viewer's expectations. So how does Tarantino build films that are sophisticated and yet accessible? He builds stories with natural, layered dialogue and long scenes with hidden elements that throw a wrench in the gears. He uses production design that creates contrast and emphasis. He uses primary colors to make bold statements and set the tone. His cinematography is robust and built on eliciting emotions. He looks for unexpected editing opportunities to help build fear, anticipation, and energy. With sound design that emphasizes the large actions on screen. He uses music that personally inspires him and plays against expectations, or he avoids it. 
You really want me to shake your hand? I insist. There are more Quentin Tarantino filmmaking techniques. Which didn't we touch on? Which are your favorite? <laughs> Share them in the comments. The Studio Binder blog offers numerous articles and videos about filmmaking and auteurs like Tarantino. Make sure to subscribe to our channel below. Click the bell icon for notifications and follow us on our Instagram page. You know something, viewers? I think this just might be my masterpiece. What's up, you bitch? I think this just might be my masterpiece.